Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about whether we could actually turn our beautiful moon into something that might resemble a sun. So, can we actually turn our beautiful moon into a star? Let's find out using the Universe Sandbox and talk a little bit about the differences in structure and formation of the moon and the sun. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So when I actually turned the moon into the sun here, it uh, swallowed our planet Earth. It actually completely disappeared and I'm going to show you what happened here uh, as soon as I recreate this. It's actually kind of interesting. I didn't realize it would totally swallow the Earth right away. So what I did is change this to the uh, mass of the sun. And as soon as you do that, look at that. Boom, Earth is gone. It actually becomes part of the moon. So this is not exactly what we're going to be doing. This was just fun to see because this is what the moon becomes. It becomes a very interesting black dwarf or a, I guess black star looking thing it has very low temperature because it hasn't really established itself as a star just yet. But that's not what we're creating. What we're go going to be doing is we're going to be actually physically changing our moon into an object that will actually have something similar to a nuclear reaction on the inside. In other words, we're going to condense it into something that may start a fusion reaction on the inside, thus turning it into a very large nuclear reactor similar to the sun. How can we actually do this? Well, for once in this particular game, there's this one feature that I've recently discovered that allows you to um, heat up the objects quite dramatically by um, changing their density, by increasing their density. So here's what I mean by this. Let's add the moon to this simulation right here. It's going to be orbiting around the Earth right there. And um, we're just going to give it maybe a little bit of atmosphere. So let's go in here and actually let's change the atmosphere to uh, something similar to the atmospheric pressure on Venus. So it's going to be about maybe 90 atmospheres. So as we add the atmosphere, you'll see that the color changes just a little bit and the temperature actually starts going up quite dramatically because here, due to the surface pressure now, we have a tremendously large greenhouse effect, which is causing the moon to suddenly turn into a comet-like object with what seems to be, in a few seconds, a molten surface. If we wait long enough, it's going to start acquiring these really cool features on the surface. There you go. So this is, this is a good start. Now, it's actually losing a lot of this atmosphere because it's basically evaporating and creating this almost like a comet-like object. But before, before we actually turn uh, the moon into a star or, I guess, a sun, I wanted to actually talk about uh, some cool features that ancient astronomers kind of didn't really know because they always thought that the moon and the sun were the same size. Well, obviously they're not. Today we know that the moon is tiny in comparison to our own sun, which is here. Here's the sun, there's the moon. The moon is really, really tiny in comparison to the size of our star. Um, but in the skies, if you look at them, if you actually look at the moon and the sun from our planet Earth, interestingly, they actually appear the same size. Which, uh, obviously, you know, it makes sense because the moon is much closer than the sun. But what this creates is a very unique structure, a very unique uh, thing that only will exist for another few million years. And I'm talking about the eclipse. And because uh, moon and the sun, they're uh, same size in our skies, they basically appear relatively same in terms of the actual size, maybe this way. Um, because of this, once in a while, when the moon comes in front of the sun, we get what's known as the solar eclipse and the sun disappears completely. Now, even though this is something very common on Earth, and there's actually going to be one very big solar eclipse um, in the United States in August of 2017, or prob probably already happened if you're watching this in the future, um, this is actually a very unusual phenomenon. It doesn't actually exist anywhere else in our solar system, and it probably doesn't even exist in many uh, stars around the galaxy. So the fact that we can see the solar eclipse and the fact that we actually have it on our planet makes our planet and our moon very, very, very unique. You don't actually, you wouldn't see this very, um, very often. And this is, this is probably the major difference between our planet and our moon and some of the other planets and moons out there. 
But anyway, we're digressing from the main topic. So let's go in here and uh, freeze the mass and start decreasing the size of the moon. And as soon as we start doing that, you'll notice that the temperature actually starts climbing as well. And so this way, because we're condensing it, because we're actually changing the total density of the subject, the molecules on the inside are going to start coming closer and closer together until at some point we'll actually initiate a nuclear reaction on the inside. So somewhere maybe around this point is actually going to have very similar temperature right about now, very similar temperature to the temperature of the sun. So this is actually at where we could probably start a nuclear reaction on the inside. And so at this point, with the size of 90 kilometers, we actually have created a miniature star in our skies. So right now, if I were to maybe disable the labels, you could probably see that there's now a tiny star orbiting around our planet. This is the moon as the star. Now this is actually kind of theoretical, but in essence, this is how nuclear bombs work, for example. If to initiate a reaction in a nuclear bomb, you actually have to bring um, various radioactive molecules really close together for them to initiate a nuclear reaction. So you have to kind of condense them into this uh, really small area. And this would actually create uh, what we would call a nuclear bomb. And so right now we're kind of doing this to our moon, but we don't want it to explode, obviously. We want it to stay stable and we want it to actually maybe even provide some heat and some radiation uh, to warm up our beautiful planet. And there it is, actually. You can kind of see it really barely. It's a very, very tiny object, but it does provide uh, radiation to us. So it might actually be warming up our planet right now. And uh, we can check that later on when we, uh, when we look at our planet's statistics. But for now, let's actually make it a little bit hotter. Let's, let's keep increasing the uh, density of this particular moon. And let's change it so it becomes a white blue star. We can actually even turn it into a white blue star by uh, completely making it super tiny, like a kilometer in size. And this will increase the temperature quite dramatically. Now you can see it starts to lose even more atmosphere. Uh, so it's actually smoking right now and its temperature is going up. It's actually still going up. So we're going to keep doing this until it becomes super, super, super hot. So let's, let's make this like one kilometer in, in radius. So there is the one kilometer moon with a temperature of 42,000 degrees. Um, and this is a, a similar to typical uh, white stars out there. And if we actually look at Earth right now, you can you can barely see it because it's so small, but you can still see it. It's right there. It's this little speck of light. And this is providing our planet with just a little bit more um, radiation, a little bit more temperature. If I were to moon, move the moon a lot closer to Earth, it would actually provide enough energy to possibly even support life. But because this is a nuclear reaction, it's a nuclear reactor in essence, it would very likely provide a lot of radiation that would also maybe destroy life on Earth. So we don't want it to be too close because we want, to, we want to still be protected from uh, dangerous, super dangerous um, radioactive rays that this, this star creates right now. Now, theoretically, this is obviously not really possible because this would not be a very stable object. You could only create this for like a fraction of a second before it either explodes completely or just goes back to its original size or even collapses into a tiny, uh, black hole that will then disappear completely. But in this game, we can actually create a very stable star, moon the star, star as the moon or moon as the star, and we can actually make it orbit around our planet. And before we finish, let's actually kind of try to use it for, uh, for some radiation as well. We're going to come much closer to our planet Earth. So we're going to be within about 30,000 kilometers um, where the moon was originally when it was just created. And we're going to have it orbit around our, our planet and just see what happens to the temperature here. Hopefully it will actually increase, but not too much. So you can see it's kind of going up, I guess, a little bit, or actually maybe a lot more than I thought. So this uh, star-like object, the moon, 
is now going to be providing some extra heat for our beautiful planet. And so maybe sometime in the future when we know how to manipulate stellar objects and planets and so on and so forth, and when our own sun doesn't provide us as much energy anymore, when it basically becomes a white dwarf, we could maybe turn our moon into a, a tiny star orbiting around us, just like you see right here, and this would provide us with some needed radiation and heat to survive further on our planet Earth. And so that's kind of all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to show you how to create a tiny, tiny little star, the moon, and make it orbit around our planet. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And to finish this video, let's actually maybe bring it even closer and see what actually happens. Now, I wonder if it's going to start leaching some of the mass from our planet because of the... Oh, never mind. This is what happens. It collides with our planet Earth. I, for a second there, thought the tidal effects would take over, but they didn't. The moon just collided and created this very large, very beautiful hole. Anyway, space out, and as always, bye-bye.